everybody, this is Barry Wiles with Sequencing Solutions, where we are sequencing with a cause. So today's video is going to be about custom models. And the reason I'm doing this video is there's been a couple instances where I've been talking to people about custom models, and then there were a couple of threads in Facebook where some people were getting frustrated with wiring props and determining which models to use. And then after they got modeled, what... Um, the model doesn't match the wiring, what do they do? And and some models that are pretty elaborate, you know, if, if you've pushed a bunch of pixels, you know, as most people know, you you, you get uh, pixel thumb, as we call it, with uh, blisters or, or uh, bruising. And the last thing you want to do is pull out 250 pixels and then rewire it to match up with the modeling and the prop. So what I'm going to do is show you kind of how to fix that in a model in x lights because it's a lot easier to do on the computer than to pull all your pixels out and push them. And then uh, I'm also going to show you how to model maybe mo something that is very unique or custom. Now, like most people, I got into my um, Christmas lighting existence using incandescent bulbs. And I, I live in Florida. You know, my, my wife gave me the edict that, hey, you know, I, I don't mind you doing it, but this thing can't look bad in the daylight. So... After some collaboration with her, we decided to come up with kind of a Southern Florida theme. So our, our first shows, we had dolphins, pink flamingos, palm trees, you know, mixed in with some snowman and some other you know, Christmasy type stuff. And we've pretty much kept that theme. Uh, now I have surfboards. I have kind of a, kind of a definitely a, a Florida theme to my display. But I had a lot of these props that had incandescent lights on. I said, I'd really like to keep the prop and convert them to LEDs. So I had these wire frames. I had some palm trees. I had the flamingos. I had a parrot. Um, I've got a dolphin, a jumping dolphin that I really liked. So I decided to uh, pixelate these, put uh, RGB pixels on so that uh, I could still use them. So what I got is a picture here of one of the flamingos, and I, I've got there's two or three different type that I have with this wire mesh, have different leg positions and stuff. But I'll, I'll just use this one as the example for today. So what I did was I said, all right, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to strap pixels on here, and and I kind of wired this the best way I thought uh, that that allowed the wiring to flow, got the distances with the pixels I wanted, and then I said, okay, I'm going to I'm going to start with the input side on the left, go through, around, come back down, and go out to the right, and then I'll connect to the next flamingo over there. And that's probably the most important thing to understand is how are you going, how do you have this wired? And what happens is what you'll do is this will become this in X lights. And I'm going to show you how to get there. It's not that difficult. And there, I'm going to give you two methods to do it. Now, X lights has the tools built into it to make this really easy. And uh, not all the tools were there when I started doing this and some things were added, the, basically the ability to put a picture into the, um, into the, into the, uh, the node data tool. And we'll talk about that in a minute when I show it. So I actually started mine with an Excel spreadsheet. I'm gonna show you how to do it in, in the Excel spreadsheet and I'm gonna show you how to do it in the X lights um, directly and give you both ways, and you can pick which way works for you. The reason I like the Excel spreadsheet is I have all my models in a workbook. Should something happen to x lights that I can't get my models back, that node data is saved in an Excel spreadsheet so that I can save it. You can do it when you set it up in x lights and copy it into the Excel spreadsheet as well. So um, that that is definitely an option, and I'll, I'll, we'll go back and forth on that. And then the other case is going to be, well, and I'll, after we talk about building these custom models, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, kind of the standard models, but what happens if you've got to modify them and make them a custom model, okay? Now, one thing to understand, the, the, probably the most important thing on the custom model layout to understand is that when we're looking at this model and we're setting up the nodes in the node data, and I'll, I'm going to explain this chart a little bit more um, later, but you need to understand that the nodes that you put in 
are looked at from the front. And that's going to be very important because uh, I've had a couple people actually put this numbering system in based on the wiring from the back, and then everything's opposite. Everything's going to look okay in X-Lights, and then when you go to put it on your prop, everything's going to run backwards. Okay, So we'll talk about that in a minute. But first, I'm going to go through this concept of, of putting in the Flamingo. So, what I have here is I have my spreadsheet, and like I said, you can see I've got toucans, I've got surfboards, I've got all kinds of fun stuff in here that I've played with and made custom models for. And what I have is a template sheet that I created that just has a whole bunch of little boxes in it. Now, if you're not real familiar with Excel, I'll show you how real quickly how to do this. What you do is you, you start yourself a new sheet, and... Uh, Do a new sheet because I started doing the, the, the box there. So you, get, you have a new sheet that comes up with your standard spacing. You just go across the top here, pick a bunch of columns. It doesn't matter. You can pick however many you want. You want to right click on those. You're going to see column width here. And I'm going to put the number two in. And that makes a nice little square that I can work with. And if, if you think of how x looks at your props, x looks at everything in a grid, especially custom models. What it does is it creates a custom grid that your model fits into, and it, it looks exactly like this. I'm not going to go into the details of rendering and all that kind of stuff. Just understand that x looks at everything on an XY coordinate for a custom model. So if I need more columns, I can go in here, come across, oops, Come across, select a bunch of columns, and um, add, uh, insert more columns if I need to. You can go over here, blah, 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 go home, insert sheet columns, and it'll insert more columns with the things. So once you've got a sheet set up, I would save it, call it template, so that you've got, you've got something that has these squares on, okay? So... Then what I'm going to do is I copied that over and named it Flamingo just so we can show um, what it looks like um, or, or save it when we want to do it. So I have this. I want to go up to insert. I'm going to go to pictures. And I'm going to insert that picture that I took of the Flamingo. As you can see, what I want to do is adjust that picture size just a little bit just so I got kind of a decent size grid. You can see in the picture each one of these pixels that I wired. So I want to make sure that at least there's enough pixel resolution, or I mean squares, that I can kind of um, um, separate these enough when I make the model. Now you sit there and say, okay, the picture, I can't see behind it, right? So what you do is you just go to Format Picture. You pick this little thing, and there's a thing called Transparency. Now you may have an older version of Excel, so you'll have to figure out this is Office 365. Um, so you'll have to figure out, you know, how to get to the transparency and all that. But I pick, you put it about 50%. Now you can kind of see through it and you can see the grid behind it. Now what I typically do is I try to start, I kind of leave a row each way around this picture. And I'm going to, that, that's going to become evident why I do that um, when we go to move this information over to X-Lights when we copy and paste. So... The one thing with Excel is I can't, the picture's kind of on top of this. So what I have to do is I actually have to click and use the arrow keys to move around the picture. Um, you can't see me, but I'm actually using the left and right arrow keys to get behind the picture and get to the cells that I want. So like I told you, I knew that this was the first pixel that I put in. That's the input. So I put the number one. The next pixel in the string is going to be number two. Next one's going to be three, four five, six, and I'm going to go around this whole prop and enter these pixel numbers in as I go through around this prop. Now, I am not going to make you guys watch this because I think you kind of understand now, but on top of each one of those pixels in this, I'm going to put the number 1 through 50 because I actually made, the, I made this so that I put 50 pixels on. That way it took one string. I didn't have to cut and paste you know, pixels on and everything. And I, I thought it gave it enough definition to do what I wanted to do. So let's jump ahead to where I've actually got that done. Okay, so 
I've got my Flamingo. As you can see, I've got all the pixels numbered 1 through 50, and this is how it looks from the front. Now, if I were to take this picture and flip it and look at it from the back on how I'm wired, I would have to number it to the opposite, and that gets, that gets a little bit difficult to do. So it's you, you have to make sure that you keep track of you know what the front of the look looks like. So now that I've got this done, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up and click one of these squares on the outside of the picture. And I'm going to drag it across. I'm going to drag it down until I get all of those numbers in the box. Okay. I'm going to right click and I'm going to say copy. Now we're going to jump over to Xlights. So Xlights has this thing called Create New Custom. So I'm going to click Create New Custom. I'll put the box over here for now. I create a box. Now, I use the 3D view. Um, if you don't use the 3D view, if you just use the 2D view, it'll just put the prop on the thing. You won't get these pull around arrows um, for the sizing. Oops. Let's do it again. So let's put the model in here. Now, once you open this box up, if you come over to the side of the screen, you're going to see I've got a custom model. i got custom two or three. So I'm going to call this Flamingo 2. And I think I still have a custom model to flip. Now here it doesn't have any data in it, so I'm going to go ahead and delete that just for the heck of it right now. Looks like i got another custom that I left in there. Um, oops, I didn't hit enter when I hit Flamingo 2, so... Let's go ahead and put that in there. All right. So what we want to do now is populate the model's data. So we're going to click on the little things here, and that's going to open up a dialog box. It's going to bring up the custom model template. And I'm going to go ahead and drop this down just because I want to uh, make a little bit more room. Now, as default, this comes up with like a 5x5 five five grid. Now, if you remember when we had our spreadsheet, we definitely had a lot more than 5 by <clears throat> Five by five. We're probably 30 by 30, 30 by 40, something like that. You can actually go through and count the the grids. Um, you know, if I look if I look down the left here, I can see I'm starting at two and I'm going down to about 38, 37. So I'm gonna go ahead, go into X lights, and I'm gonna create a 40 by 40 grid. Okay. Now, if you remember, I went into Excel here. I selected that, I right clicked and I hit copy. When I come over to Xlite, Xlite has some commands over here and they have this one called paste. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on this first cell, I'm gonna click paste and lo and behold, it pasted the data from my spreadsheet into the um, model data. Now, if I hit OK, you can see now that I have my custom model, and I can drag and move this around and put it wherever I want it to go. But it's it's pretty good shape of a flamingo, so I can at least see that it looks like um, what it's going to look like on the on the on the uh, actual show when I run it. And when you run this um, and you sequence to it, you know you can uh, put different effects and stuff on it. I actually. I'm not going to go into submodeling right now, but I actually submodeled the flamingo's bodies and legs and eyes so that I could play with that when I do um, sequencing. But I'm not going to go into that right now because submodeling on a custom model is just like submodeling anything else. So I would watch the other video on submodeling. It'll show you kind of how to go through uh, the details of that. So now, again, what I want to point out, if I go to the model data, remember we said this is how my flamingo looks and it's modeled. Now, if I go into X-Lights, one of the cool things with X-Lights is you can go into the wiring view. So as you can see in the wiring view, it's flipped this model to show you how the wiring diagram would look from the back of the prop. Now, you can also look at the node layout, and the node layout is gonna look pretty much exactly like it did in the grid that we just put in, but this is telling you what X-Lights thinks that this thing looks like. And it's starting at node one here, it follows the nodes as I've got it wired in there, okay? So that's how you put a custom model if you've got something really 
unique or dynamic into Excellent. Now, let's look at doing the same thing without the Excel spreadsheet. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete this guy. I'm going to install a new custom model. Bring it down to where we can see it. Now I can go in the, the same thing, go into the data. I get the template and I can, like I said before, we thought that that model roughly was about 40 by 40. So I'll pick a grid diameter just to get myself, you know, some number of, of pixels in here. They have the ability to put a background image in here. So if I hit browse, I can pick that same image that I used in the Excel spreadsheet. So there we go. The, the image will pop up on the screen and you can see you have the, the grid that we had and you had the picture over top of it. Now, the one nice thing is they give you this ability here. This slider allows you to adjust the transparency of the picture. So if you want to make that a little less um, visible so that you can kind of see the work, that's that's what that does. And you can go in here now onto this grid, just like we did in the Excel spreadsheet, click over where you think the nodes are and you can say, okay, that's node one. I'm going to go there and that's going to be node two and so on and so forth. You know, we'll go up the model and, and where these nodes are and it just has to be close. It doesn't have to be perfect. And we can go around this whole model and, and put those node numbers in, which I'm going to do and fast forward so that you don't have to watch all that. Okay. So I went through and I populated the rest of the nodes to match up with my picture. What started at one came around through the, the, the way I've got wired. If I hit OK, as you can see now, again, I have my uh, custom model in the shape of my flamingo. If I had palm trees, it would look like palm trees. Um, so the, the, the thing with this is it allows you to create models that best represent some of the more unique props that you have out there. Now, there's some really interesting ones out there. Um, I've seen there's a 3D cactus out there. There's a 3D trees that people have. I mean, the modeling can get very complex. So as you tackle those um, models, I'm not going to get into custom 3D models. Maybe I'll do another video on that um, in the future because that's a whole nother animal. Uh, and quite frankly, I think most people that are uh, starting to get in that level probably have a little more experience, a little more programming uh, capability under their belt when they set those up. So, but we'll definitely do a video on that at some point in time because um, it's, uh, I think it's very interesting. And it's uh, the 3D capabilities of Excelites are awesome. It just gives you a whole nother level of sequencing and programming. And we'll do some other things on that uh, in the future as well. So let's look at our next case where we have a model uh, that may already be defined or we're having issues between what's in X lights and what's, uh, what we're actually wired with. Now, I would always recommend anytime you can of using the X lights models that are already set up. And if you go to this, this download, uh, create a new download, it will bring up the list of props that are available it's, and it's very available and it's very um, um, wide. So you, Bascoyo and um, Gilbert Engineering are two of the bigger vendors. Um, I would say that most people buy props from, from either or both and they have done a really good job and the x team and people have done a good job of really trying to make sure that the models in here exist for all the various products that they um, sell. So I definitely encourage anytime you can to stick with the X-Lights models for a lot of reasons. If um, you, if you uh, are sequencing and somebody does something with the default layout versus a per preview, it will probably work in the manner that you would expect. Uh, most people that do sequences like myself try to stay away from the default um, model view and rendering and I, I won't go into the whole rendering thing right now but uh just just let it be known that if you can use these models do it but 
We had a case, and, and I've, I've run into this a few times. Sometimes it gets confusing when people are trying to wire up models because the information isn't always there. It, it, it's, it's like, okay, how do I, I push these pixels in and I'm looking at the wiring and I'm trying to model it in X lights and it's not doing what it's supposed to do. And, and it can get confusing, especially if you're new to this. So what I'm going to do is bring up, um, I'm going to look at, this is a six ring model. So uh, we had somebody on Facebook and I hope they don't mind me sharing the picture here. Um, but there was some, some confusion on how they wanted to wire this six layer star up. And they had pushed in, there were 250 pixels, I think, in this thing. And he says, look, I pushed this thing a couple different times. I'm trying to figure out the wiring. I'm trying to figure out the modeling. Um, and it's just, it's not, it's not matching up. So if you look at the default, this is a default model for that particular prop. If I right click and say, hit the wiring view, Let's expand that so we can see it. This is from the model manufacturer, how they expect you to wire this prop from the back. So one of the questions that came out, I see a lot of times is when people say, hey, do you have the wiring diagram for the prop uh, from this particular vendor? And what I, the easiest way to figure out how they usually want to wire these is, is to go ahead, download the prop on x -Lights, Hit that right click, go into wiring view, and look at it and say, okay, this is how they expect this model to be wired. Now, if I bring my picture back up, let me see if I can put these side by side for a minute. Oh, kind of hard to do with what I'm working with here, but... The, the, I, the key that I'm trying to push here is if you look at where they started wiring, eh, we'll just do it this way. They started the node one here, okay? And it looks like what they did was they did the inner star, then the next star, the next star, the next star, and then they ended up at 250 here at the bottom somewhere, okay? Well, the model in X lights is saying, I want to start from one and go from the outside and around and around and all the way in to um, the end node, which is 200 and some odd nodes in, right? 268, 270. Um, so what happens? So, so you've pushed all these pixels. You're going, oh my God, what do I do? I, do I pull all these pixels out again and rewire the star? Um, and you don't have to do that. You can go in here. So if you if you remember when we did the custom model, all, every model has model data, right? And if you go in this, this is going to show you the grid. And this grid is going to show you the um, pixel numbers for this model. Now, again, I, I, I can't point this out enough. And this is where, you know, you have to be very careful. This view of the model is from looking at it from the front. When we looked at the wiring diagram, the wiring diagram, oh, let me open both, gives you the look from the back. So if you notice, one through eight takes off from left to right. But when I look at the model data, from the front, it looks like this. And that's gonna be very important because what we're, what we're going to do is instead of pushing all these pixels from the back of this picture, okay? We're gonna start with one in the top corner and we're gonna follow his same pixel push through his star on the x lights model. Now, the tricky part is this says he starts at one and he goes down to the left. When I start numbering on here, I'm going to put, I'm going to start the one here and I'm going to start moving to the right. Okay. It's very important to remember that. 
And then what you're going to do is you're going to go through this whole process, which could really take some time, but it's a lot easier to fix this on this screen. Oops, on this screen than it is to pull all those pixels out and re-push them in. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to go through this um, star real quick, and I'm going to renumber these. I'm not going to bore you with watching that, and then we'll um, we'll pick it up from there. Okay, so we went through and we renumbered the star, starting with number one on the top, and labeled each ring in successive order all the way around the star until we ended up finishing at 270 with the 270 pixels on the star. So we hit OK. We see that we've got our star. If we right click on this now and look at the wiring view, what we'll see is what the wiring view of this should look like. And if we compare this to our picture, we can see now where we start at one, we start at one because we're looking at them from the back of the prop here, two, three, four, he's got it marked here, five, three through five, going around in circles all the way to the end where it hits 270, hits 270 here. So now this wiring diagram matches this wiring set up in his prop, which matches up which, with what X lights is expecting or will generate out to his prop. So this allows you a method to um, fix wiring if you need to, or if you've, you've got a prop and didn't wire it the same way that the um, wire prop uh, looks out in the, in the models, it gives you the ability to go ahead and fix it. Now, one thing I will note too on these custom models, and I probably should have done it on the Flamingo when I did it, is you don't want to leave a lot of these extra blanks out here like I did on the Flamingo. So what, what typically you can do is like I could go here and, and trim this width down to maybe 36. Um, you know, same with the bottom, if I, you know, the height, if I want to go to like 38. So you want to keep it as close as possible to the model, mainly because when X lights goes to model this, it, it's going to lay a grid over it that looks like this. And then it's actually going to keep track of all these extra spots. And so several things happen. The way I understand it, like if you're, when you're, when you go to render your program, it takes longer because X lights is building more of these, these pixels and things up. So uh, you want to try to keep those, those matrices as close as possible to the model, uh, model size. So I hope this video helped you understand a little more about custom modeling and uh, will allow you to uh, create some things uh, maybe that, uh, that uh, are uh, interesting and unique. This has been Barry Wiles with Sequence Solutions. I hope this video helped and may all of your displays illuminate and be bright. Thank you.